Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Soul Guard Life Pack Endeavor. And I have to say, I'm pretty surprised that I haven't heard more about this bag. Like the Knack Pack and the Nomadic Travel Pack, this tries to offer the ideal one bag experience, providing a bag that works well for travel and for your day to day use. And these bags are always something that I've been very fascinated by. I try any of them that I come across because I'm always searching for that perfect one bag experience where I don't have to take a packable day pack and I have something that can really work for a longer term travel for at least a week. And with those types of bags, there's always some sort of trade-off. The bags that I mentioned from Nomadic and Knack walk those trade-offs pretty well. So I was very curious to see how the life pack would hold up against those as it really seemed to offer a very impressive feature set and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience testing it over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, the bag has a pretty modern, minimal, and techy vibe that reminds me a little bit of bags from companies such as Air and Incase. So it's going to be a versatile aesthetic that's going to work well for taking into the office, for walking around the city, or for traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels pretty solidly built. The exterior fabric is called Shortex, which is made out of recycled ocean plastics. It also helps keep the bag pretty lightweight, coming in at under three pounds, which is impressive considering the padding and the features that are included on the bag. The fabric also has kind of a ripstop patterning, which again, just you know gives it that sense that it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage. It seems to offer a decent amount of weather resistance. On the bottom, you also have a reinforced section here to give you some extra protection against the elements and just to prevent uh, abrasion and anything like that. Um, and then you also have some zippers that work very smoothly. I wasn't able to find any YKK branding on these, so I'll have to confirm the zipper brand, but for now they've worked smoothly and they again feel like they're gonna hold up even over a longer period of use. Continuing along the outside of the bag, as far as branding, you just have the very subtle Soul Guard name here on the front. So I like that that's kept pretty minimal. You have external water bottle pockets, one on each side that offer a decent amount of space. I was able to hold the same 20 ounce water bottle that you see in a lot of my other daily bag videos. And there is some elasticity to the compartment, so it's nice that it gives you some flexibility. It also helps hold the bottle in place. The compartment does start to feel a little tight when you have the bag packed out as I currently do. So anything thicker I think would have been tough to fit or it might have started to actually slide out of the bag. And I like that because it has this elasticity, it kind of pulls the compartments close to the bag to give it a cleaner overall look when they're not in use. Above the water bottle pocket, you also have a little metallic ring, which is gonna be a good spot to attach something with a carabiner, like a hero clip or maybe a hand sanitizer or luggage tag. On the top and side of the bag, you have some really nice, well padded handles that are gonna allow you to carry this either like a briefcase or to just pick the bag up off the ground. This is also gonna be great for loading this into an overhead storage compartment. I really like the implementation on these handles. Again, you have a really nice sort of seatbelt like material. They're very thick, they seem reinforced and like they're not gonna tear even when you're you know, carrying a ton of weight with these over a longer period of time. While we're on the exterior, another thing I wanna call out is that the bag does stand up pretty well on its own, given that it has a wider and flatter base. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 27 to 28 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. It's able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and I still had some leftover space. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it doesn't stick out too much or make it awkward to navigate crowded areas, jump onto public transit or carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. And one of the really nice things about this bag is the fact that it is able to expand to accommodate additional items for a longer trip. And so once you expand the bag out with the zipper that it has here, it is able to expand up to a little over 35 liters, which is definitely a great one bag travel size. It does stick out quite a bit once you expand it out, but if you're looking to just, you know, really live that one bag life and have something that can work well for travel or EDC, this is gonna be a really valuable feature. Taking a look at the straps on the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. You have a decent amount of padding. 
it's maybe not quite as rigid as I would like to see for a bag of this size, uh, but it still felt pretty comfortable. On the inside, you have a fairly breathable fabric to help prevent moisture from building up. And then the straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the straps, you also have an additional metallic ring here, which is gonna be a good spot to maybe hang your sunglasses or attach additional accessories. You have an adjustable sternum strap that's gonna help you distribute the weight. And then you also have zippered pockets on each strap, which are gonna be a great spot to maybe easily access a, a transit card or something like that while you're on the go. Moving into the back paneling, this has also felt really comfortable. You have the same soft padding that we saw on the straps with a similar level of breathability. And then I like that this padding is elevated to create this air channel to provide you with some ventilation and airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. On the back paneling, you also have a nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And then below that, you have two hidden zippered compartments in the lumbar area, which are gonna be a good spot to hide anything that's a little bit more sensitive. So if you have your you know, extra cash, a wallet, or maybe a passport, you will be able to hide this and have it be a little bit more protected from pickpockets. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a nice variety of pockets all throughout. Starting off on the front, you have a simple quick access pocket, and I like that this has sort of a flap that comes over to give you a little bit more protection against the elements. And this is a pretty deep compartment. It doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, but pretty low, just a few inches above. So, you know, you have plenty of space for something that's a little bit taller, and it offers a pretty decent volume even when the main compartment is packed up. So in this compartment at the moment, I tossed in my GoPro. I have the Tom Bin Ghostwell pouch that has some smaller tech and EDC items that I always have with me. And then I also have my Kindle e-reader. And the last thing that I have in here at the moment is a full-size moleskin notebook. Below that, you have another zippered compartment, which I believe is maybe meant to store some sort of a rain cover or accessory that is sold separately. Um, there are some attachment points here, which I didn't end up using, and then this just offers a decent amount of space if you don't want to use a rain cover or anything like that for other accessories that you need to carry. So in my case, I actually ended up using this to hold my headlamp. Moving into the main compartments of the bag, the way that the company described this on their site is this having kind of a life compartment and a work compartment. So the work compartment is kind of where you have your tech items, your laptop, your dongles and all that. And then the life compartment is for, you know, when you're traveling or just other sort of non-work related items. So I'll start with the work section first. And this has a dedicated laptop area, which I'm always a fan of. It's, I really like when it's separate from the main compartment to just make it easier to grab. So nice amount of internal organization in this compartment in addition to the laptop sleeve. So I'll start on the front of the compartment where you have a few different slip pockets and slots for any of those you know, work or tech related items. So all the way here on the left, you have a slip pocket that's large enough to hold my Apple Magic Mouse. In front of that, you have a few elastic bands, which are gonna be good for tech dongles or EDC items. In my case, I currently have just a little flashlight here. And then next to that, another sort of Kind of a mid-sized slip pocket, not a ton of elasticity in these, but still enough volume to hold any accessories that I might need to grab quickly. So I have here a lightning cable and power brick for my tablet and my phone. Then all the way on the right, you have an additional slip pocket. This one's a little bit more narrow, but still enough space to hold my Apple AirPods. On the front of that, you have a few slots for something like a pen or a stylus. You have three. Currently, I just have a bolt action pen here from the Ridge, which I am a big fan of. And then I also have a stylus. And then below that you have an additional larger zippered compartment, which is gonna be a great spot for your laptop charger. That's what I currently have here. I have the USB-C cable as well as the power brick. And the compartment does have some volume, which is how it's able to accommodate maybe a bulkier accessory. So really well thought out layout there. And then in this compartment, you also have a little lanyard with a plastic clip uh, which may be a good spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. It's an interesting placement. I'm not really sure why this would be in this area as it's a little bit more difficult to access and I actually didn't end up using it to hold anything uh, for my particular use case. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a sleeve that is actually see-through, which is pretty interesting. And this is gonna be a good spot to hold documents or folders. In my case, I actually use this to hold a tablet. This is the iPad mini, which fit in there easily. I could definitely see a 10 inch tablet fitting in there comfortably. It's not super padded or anything like that, but still nice to have a separate dedicated area for that type of items. 
and then you also have a well padded laptop sleeve and this is going to be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop easily currently what i have in here is my 13 inch macbook pro you can see there's plenty of leftover space here at the top i really like that the sleeve itself is pretty padded on the back you also have this soft lining to help prevent against scratching and the compartment is a little bit pulled up off the bottom of the ground and padded to give you some protection if you happen to place your device down a little bit harder so pulling my laptop out now the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. The sleeve comes up a decent amount, so if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here comfortably. And again, with the padding that's offered here, the fact that it's pulled up off the bottom, and with this soft lining, it really feels like my device is gonna be very well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. Moving into the life section of the bag, this is what I would consider kind of the main compartment in a traditional backpack. It's a top-loading compartment, but the flap comes up enough that you still have visibility into the compartment and you can pack it out pretty easily, grab what you need. So a pretty simple layout overall and it's actually compressed down right now. So this is the 27, 28 liter capacity. And even at that size, I was impressed with just how much it was able to hold. It's a simple layout that's also gonna be great for bulkier items. So jumping into what I have here, first up at the top, I have my rain jacket, which I definitely have with me during the rainier season. I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones with their hard shell case. I have the Evergood Civic Access pouch, which is one of my favorite kind of tech and EDC pouches, particularly for working remotely. I have at the bottom here, the DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. And then I also have my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. I like that it has a lighter lining to give you a little bit more visibility. And it's great how much this comes up, which is what allows it to handle bulkier items well. And even when it's compressed down, at this size range, it could actually work as a really great minimal travel bag, so I would be able to fit my larger double-sided compressible packing cube, a dot kit, and an extra pair of shoes, and be able to use it for a longer weekend trip without even having to expand it out. Inside this main area, you also have some additional organizational options. Starting off on the side, you have kind of a clear, flatter slip pocket, which is gonna be a good spot maybe for your phone, or in my case, a portable battery. That's what I have here, so that I can keep my devices charged on the go. And then on the other side, you have a compartment that's a little bit more padded. I think this is meant to be a sunglasses compartment or a glasses compartment. Um, in my case, I used it to just hold a little tin with some band-aids and ointment as it does have a decent amount of volume as well. On the front of that, you have some more slots that are gonna work well for a pen or maybe a thinner screwdriver if you have your glasses and you want to adjust them. On the inside here, you have an additional lanyard with a plastic clip, which is gonna be a good spot for your keys or a multi-tool. Soulguard also includes this bottle opener with the bag if you wanna keep that and have that with you for your day. On the lid of the compartment, you have a mesh zippered pocket that's gonna offer a decent amount of volume for any of the larger items that didn't fit into other kind of slip pockets throughout the bag. In my case, I used this to hold my sunglasses with their case that fit in there comfortably. There was still some leftover capacity. And then down on the bottom here, you have another zippered compartment. This one doesn't have uh, mesh, so you can't see into the inside. And it actually has a little divider so it separates this into two smaller compartments, which is an interesting choice. I think it works well for the items that I carry. So in this one here on the left, I use this to hold a deck of playing cards. And then on the right, I have the little manicure set that I normally like to carry with me. The, the pockets here are pretty deep though. So if you wanted to use this for portable batteries, for your phone, for cables, you would have plenty of flexibility to do so. The last thing we're gonna be taking a look at is the expandability of the bag in a little bit more detail and the closet accessory that is a big part of Soulguard's kind of travel ecosystem. So as mentioned earlier, you can expand the bag out to about 35 to 38 liters. It's a pretty large expansion that you get out of the bag when you open it up completely. So it can really hold a ton of stuff, really great one bag travel option uh, that is gonna work well with packing cubes or with the expandable kind of closet accessory that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So this is very similar to the organizer that we saw when we reviewed the Tropic Feel shell system. So it has the same sort of hanging and compression um, system where you know you fill this up with everything that you wanna wear. It has three sort of main sections at the top. You have one that's divided into two compartments, which may be a good spot to roll up some t-shirts. Um, or maybe some shorts. Then you have a larger middle section, which might be a good 
area to place your pants, your shirts, any of the larger items that you're carrying with you. And then at the bottom, you have a series of dividers that is gonna be great for your underwear, your socks, or you know, for rolling up more t-shirts, bathing suits. So a lot of different kind of ways that you can organize this, this thing. It packs out quite a bit of stuff. And then you can compress it down using these straps on the side to give you just a little bit more space and just keep everything together and really tight. Um, and then you can toss this into the bag, which is definitely easier when it's expanded out um, and it fits in there comfortably. You can you know, travel to your destination. Once you arrive, you can pull that out and then you know, decompress the strap so that everything is expanded out and you can easily reach in and grab what you need. It has a hook at the top so that you can hang this in your closet, in your hotel, wherever you are. And then you, you know, it's a, it's a great way to travel and organize. I thought it was a really interesting system when I tried it out with the, with the Tropic Feel shell. It was probably my favorite aspect of that bag and so it's great to see it here as well. I will say that I struggled a bit more with the Soul Guard version of this sort of hanging closet than with Tropic Feels. One thing that that one had that this one doesn't is it had two rigid plates at the top and bottom, which helped give it sort of a structure and stability, particularly when compressing everything down. That's sort of missing here, which does keep this as a lighter accessory. It adds less weight and bulk, but it just makes it a little bit harder to use and manage and things can get either unrolled or wrinkly in a way that I didn't notice with the Tropic Feel shell. So as a concept, I think this is really a, an interesting alternative to packing cubes. I do wish that it had included maybe a little bit more of that rigidity and padding that the Tropic Feel shell uh, version included. Regardless, still think it works well as a combination with this backpack. And the backpack itself has just been so impressive. It really checks off pretty much all the boxes for what I would be looking for out of an ideal EDC or travel backpack. The flexibility that it offers with its ability to expand and compress is fantastic. And if you're just looking for a versatile, comfortable backpack that can work for your day to day, for work, that you can expand out for trips, um, then this is gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Soul Guard Life Pack Endeavor over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $245 with the closet that we demonstrated during the video. And this is definitely a bit of an investment. It's not a cheap bag by any means. You are getting a very interesting bag that's gonna have a great feature set. However, there's also gonna be some other great options in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Nomadic Travel Pack, which was the bag that first kind of introduced me to this expandable and compressible style bag. This idea of having one bag that can work for any purposes, that was the first one that I used extensively. That has since been updated from the version that I use, so it has better materials now. It you know, has YKK zippers, a really solid kind of tarpaulin-like exterior that's gonna offer plenty of weather resistance. The aesthetic of that bag has never been my favorite. That's probably always been my biggest sticking point. But besides that, it still is just a fantastic bag that compares well to this one. It's got a comfortable harness system, great organizational layout. It expands out to about 30 liters so you can use it for a longer weekend trip. I did find that it can't hold quite as much as this bag when it's expanded out. And I also prefer the organizational layout on this one for day-to-day -day use. It just you know matched up with my style a little bit more. The aesthetic is better. However, if you prefer durability and you're looking for something that's gonna offer better weather resistance, that's gonna be with you for a long time to come and still give you that flexibility of being good for minimal travel or everyday usage, then the Nomadic Travel Bag is gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. The next bag this made me think of is the Knack Pack Series 2, which is another really great expandable and compressible bag meant to work great as a travel bag or an EDC backpack. That one has a really kind of professional aesthetic in my opinion. It's a perfect bag for work travel. I really love the organizational layout that it has. Just the pocketing is fantastic, particularly for day-to-day -day use. It also feels like it's able to hold about the same amount of stuff as this bag when it's expanded out. So a really nice capacity, maybe slightly smaller, but it's gonna be able to hold more than enough for you know a longer weekend trip or even up to a week of travel. It's a comfortable bag to wear. I still prefer the aesthetic and the organizational layout of this for day-to-day -day use. I find that they both have a similar build quality and so if you're looking for something that has a maybe more professional or modern vibe, I might go with the Knack Series 2, but if you're looking for something that's gonna be maybe a little bit more comfortable and that just has a slightly different organizational layout, then the Life Pack Endeavor may be the way to go. Another bag this made me think of is the NK City Commuter Pack, which has a pretty similar aesthetic to this. It's got kind of a minimal, modern, techie vibe. 
Lots of great organizational options on that one. A really big, quick access pocket that's fleece lined, solid laptop protection, it's comfortable to wear, and it does expand out if you need a little bit more capacity so it can hold quite a bit. It doesn't expand out as far as this bag here. It's not meant to be for as long-term travel as the life pack endeavor but it is just going to give you some extra space if you want to toss in a packing cube and some travel items you can compress it down for day-to-day -day use it's going to look great in an office environment and that's also going to be a great one to consider if you're looking to save a little bit of money it's not going to have all the same sort of bells and whistles as this bag here in case also doesn't have the closet organizer or anything like that but if you want something that's versatile stylish that has this sort of a vibe and that's going to be a fantastic option to consider and then the last option that I'll mention here is the Able Carry Max, which isn't expandable like this bag necessarily, but it does come in an interesting size range at 30 liters that can work well for travel or everyday usage. It's a little bit on the larger side for EDC, but if you have to carry a little bit more stuff with you, that's gonna be very helpful. It has a cool organizational layout that's gonna be able to handle all of your tech and smaller accessories. Really interesting implementation on the water bottle pocket. And I really love the build quality on that bag. It feels like it's gonna hold up great to any sort of usage. It's made out of an X-Pack fabric, so it's gonna to offer tons of weather resistance. It has a really cool, modern, techy aesthetic. It's comfortable to wear. And so if you're looking for a bag that doesn't have, you know, sort of the complications that come with an expandable sort of zipper and having to deal with all that, and you just want a simple bag that can work well for trips or for your day to day, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at as well. With that being said, the Life Pack Endeavor holds up really well against all those options. And if you're looking for a versatile bag that can be used for EDC or for minimal travel, that's gonna give you plenty of organization and comfort. And that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Life Pack Endeavor and how it compares to some of the other hybrid travel and EDC bags that we've looked at on the channel in the past. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.